no one really gets married with an ending date. No one really gets married just for six months, six years with a with an ending date or expiration date. So we want these conversations and communications to last forever. That's why we call this Today's topic is a healthy marriage is since ask how are you and what's going on with your life and you know, we'll laugh and talk, but then at the end we may pray for them. But it's intentional. It was intentional and it had to do with those present in the conversation. And so even with your significant others, with your parents, with your children, you need to have those intentional conversations. Nonverbal communication. Now, this this is have got a lot of us in trouble. So, you know, while I'm having this, some of us need to be looking in the mirror because the nonverbal communication is those conversations we have and our body is doing more talking than our mouth. It's the body language. It's the 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 shoulders. It's the the, the rolling of the eyes. Yeah, it's that closing yourself up or lack of eye contact. What's wrong with you? Why are you upset? It's like, you know why I'm upset. Why are you asking me these things? You would think that the person knows. You would think. You would and, think. and that's where the edifying communication, exactly. the wellness check, because like I said, in edifying communication, never assume. Exactly. You would think. What's your partner? Because when he stayed out to 2 or 3 in the morning, he should know, and he should know better. But right. then... With this case, in Elkanah's mind, he's doing. He's the man that's providing. He gave the he's words. Giving, he gave the purses and the cars and the everything. So he's not understanding, Hannah, why are you grieving? Why are you weeping? Hannah, again, another night, went to bed, crying all night long, very depressed. When I look at this, they both needed a wellness check. They both needed this kind of conversation that we were talking about. Uh, Hannah needed uh, an edifying and attentional conversation about what's going on with her in the here and now, her mental state, her emotional state, her feelings. Hannah was in this sorrow type of spirit. She was bitter. She was depressed. She found herself uh, the next day. She got up and after crying and sad and not eating, she drove herself to the temple. And she went to have a conversation with God. And sometimes, you know, we need to have that true edifying conversation with ourselves mm -hmm. and with the great I am. We, we need to really have that conversation like, What's wrong with me? <laughs> what, what, what happened? What, what is going on? And so while she was there and she was weeping and she was crying and she was trying to understand, even when she didn't understand, she, she bowed a bow to, to the Lord. And, and she, she said that to a certain degree that if thou would indeed look on thy afflictions, if you would look on me and remember me and will give unto me a child, then I will give back unto you. Now, she said that sitting in the temple all by herself, just there, uh, crying and weeping, you know, all of these things, but she made a vow. She made a commitment. She had an edifying conversation with the great I am. Hannah spoke in her heart but only her lips moved because she was having this conversation with God and with herself. But her voice was not heard. But then there was a priest in the temple. And the priest saw her and said to her, why art thou drunk? And she said unto him, uh, no, sir, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I am bitter. I, 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 I've had no drink. I've had no wine. I've had nothing. I, I'm just, I'm just. Falling out my phone. Yeah, I'm just having a moment. And this moment has been lasting for weeks. 
And so she was sitting here, and she's talking to this man, and he sees and he hears her petition, and he, he, she says, I have complained. I have grieved to my husband. Now, this, this is why I want uh, to look at this. It says she has complained and grieved, but did she really complain and grieve? And this is what I want us to look at. When we really think we're having conversations, are we really saying what's on our mind? Because the truth is she never really told Elkanah her true feelings of what was going on about her but not really being able to bear children and how it was really affecting her mentally, physically, emotionally. Sometimes people know what your issues are on the surface, but they don't know how you're dealing with it physically, mentally, uh, spiritually, emotionally. They, they don't get it. They, they know you, you have this issue or something is going on, but they don't know how it's feeling because all of us react to things differently. All of us respond to things differently. And so she's sitting here in her own sorrow having this issue, but this man of God says to her, he says to her, uh, God shall grant thee that petition that thou have asked in his name. And when he said that to her, she didn't know this man. If anybody ever spoke to you that, that, that just uh, sold into your spirit, that said something to you of what you was going through, whatever he said to her, uh, according to the topic of this series, Love Lifted Me, she became lifted. The burden wasn't removed, but she felt a little better, right? She felt a little better as Hannah went her way. She got in the car. And at this time, uh, you know how it is. Just stuff happens when at a certain time she got in the car. And when she got in the car, the radio came on, and this was getting to play. He Loves Me by Kirk Franklin began to play. My mother always told me that music soothes the savage beast. Sometimes we need to listen to words of songs, and, and that's the spirit of God talking to us. When I just came to still, God still loves me. Even when I'm bitter, even when I'm mad, even when I'm sad, he loves me. Still. So as that began to go on and she get out the car, she stopped by Jewel's food, even though it's kind of hot. She went in and she bought some food. She was going to prepare dinner, surf and turf, steak and shrimp and lobster. She's getting it ready and she's getting ready to eat because she feels lifted a little, right? Not perfectly, but she feels lifted some. So as she's doing that, she prepares Elkanah. She goes home. She cooks, right? She, she's cooking the dinner. Elkanah at work. She's cooking. Now she's even running him a hot bubble bath, right? She gets this hot bubble bath together. I'm going to even call it a spiritual bath. Right? She gets this spiritual bath together. She plays flower petals from the front door to 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 the to the um to the bathroom and then to the bedroom, to the kitchen. It's stuff everywhere. Elkanah, right? Elkanah comes in the door. Now watch this, y'all. Elkanah comes in the door, kinda claps her hands. Music starts to play. <laughs> and as the music starts to play, Luther says, One look in your eyes and there I see 